Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Yeah. Hey, we're just partying over here across politics. It's Toby's birthday. Hey. <laughs> but there's no cake, and I think there should have been cake. Oh, yeah. I would have brought cake if I don't. <laughs> we, our cake is whiskey. What's yeah. your heart? <laughs> Which is not a compliment, just you know, so y'all know that. You know, I got to say, Elise, I'm really glad to have you on my birthday. <laughs> I, this, this show has been just really special. And John Henry over here, he's got, he's got a, he's, he's busting a move over he here. He's laughing my jokes, so we need him here more often. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yep. I like Somebody's got to do He's on laugh track, yeah. Oh, man. Makes me feel good about myself, John Henry. Thank you. <laughs> so, chapter 19. Reformation 500. Yeah. What is this? What, well, that too. <laughs> what does this all mean for women's vocations? Yeah. It's the name of the chapter. So, at least, what does this all mean? Well, at the end of the day, start with where you are and start with the things that are right in front of you. So, one of the things that I was pointing out is to have the right priorities. Once you have those right priorities, then it's easier to make a decision. And I think sometimes people want to make the decision and then see if it fits in with the priorities. But rather, it should be, okay, you love God. Yeah. You know his word. You know him. You grow in wisdom. And you, then you're, if you're married, you give to your husband. You try and make him more effective. You are actually a helpmate to him so that he is. It says that in the Bible somewhere. Right. Who knew? <laughs> somewhere. And Something to do with the Reformation. People getting Bibles. Something like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Message. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm sorry. I was doing something. What you say? You say something about helping your husband is part of your vocation and it should be done a lot. Well, often. <laughs> The thing is, a lot, yeah, a lot and often. (laughs) A lot and often. And the problem is sometimes it feels like, well, then what about me? Won't I get any credit? But God gives you the credit, and that's what matters. And actually, I don't think it's a problem for us to humble ourselves a little bit. Can we role play real quick? Because I think what you're saying, that goes off, and it sounds really nice. Like, okay, yes, I know God's going to pay me back for being nice to somebody. You know, <laughs> like, Somebody. I get it. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is the big rewarder. Got it. Right. But right. Um, you don't understand. My husband is a mess. <laughs> right. Like, you know, like th- there's real that there's real problems behind that. And all of a sudden you take all that stuff they have to deal with. So you're telling me to deal with this mess. You're telling me to deal with this. Like, this is hard. Like He needs to change. Well, that's why you have to have the right relationship with God as your first priority, because Amen. there's no way you can love your husband and give to him and make him successful and love your children unless you love God first. Amen. Can I be the angry at least real quick? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. What she basically said is you ain't loving Jesus right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so <laughs> Y'all know you, what I'm you, saying? you don't hear a point at your husband saying, but you got this big old long beam at your own eye and you ain't fixing. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I tell uh, couples in premarital counseling that you, so you same thing you're saying, but you can't love your wife or your husband the way God calls you to if you don't love Christ more. Mm. Amen. And I think that sometimes people, at least uh, in circles I've been in, people felt like, I mean, for instance, in college, I knew people who were dating Jesus, they said. Oh, and no. then they then had to break up with Jesus when somebody asked them to a formal. So that's unfortunate. But yeah. Yeah. are they cheating on Jesus? Yeah. I think they were. And that was, I always thought, do you realize you're going to be two timing Jesus? <laughs> but right. you know what that bless means? your heart. It's true. But people do that. Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, they, when you say love Jesus, sometimes people think that means have emotions about Jesus and it means obey Jesus. Oh, right. And I, I think that there's so much freedom in obedience and so much more freedom than being a slave to whatever your emotions mm. are today about Jesus, as opposed to just do what he says. If you love me, you obey my commands. Right. Do what he says. And you don't have a, it's not that your life is going to suddenly be easy, but your life is going to be a lot better. Your life is going to be blessed. And you're going to have peace. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's a lot. That's because, something, right? Because, because we have a lot We have a lot of people, a lot of women, without peace. A lot of women in the church. Oh, man. Amen. Without yeah. peace. And it's it's right there, ready for them. But you, you've, you've got to come. Right. And I, and I see them mm. chasing it, you know, chasing it with uh, trying to have a career on the side, trying to, ha- you know, trying to have the perfect body at the gym. Trying all the new diet fads. Trying, trying to fix your husband. Trying to, everything. Mm. Trying right? to make a difference somehow in right. whatever way the world and, told you. And you, you want to say, how's that working out for you? Yeah. Right? And I mean, how's it working out? Grabbing it's, sand is how it's working out. Right. There's no peace. Grabbing right. oil, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Just slipping right there. Right. right. But it's right there. It's right there. And the, and the gospel is all grace. So come. <laughs> I mean, it's just, there's so much God has 
in store for his people. But I think sometimes we just don't want to give ourselves up. Well, I think and that's always the way, right? I mean, right. this is, you know, this is the week of the Reformation 500. We're celebrating it. And he had to make sure we get and, that. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Reformation, I'm 500. Glad you did. Reformation 500. Yeah. Um, and, but one of the glories of the Reformation 500, obviously one of the central things that we covered was just the, fi- by it's the Reformation's birthday. Hey, and Toby's birthday. And my we birthday. Do we have a Reformation Toby. birthday? Hey, happy message. Happy- Message. <laughs> you got a happy Reformation birthday? I, I don't have a happy Reformation birthday. I'll, I'll, I'll ask 50 Cent if he got one for us. <laughs> you know, I'll ask him, like, hey, 50, you know, you got a birthday but, song. But the, re- the recovery of the justification by faith had, I mean, freed so much beyond what we can right. even imagine. Right. Like, I mean, imagine living back then where everything was about works, where everything was about buying your way out of hell, where everything was about having other people pray for you to make sure you were okay in heaven. And you but we're doing the same thing. And, yeah, and you have so yeah. many people in evangelical reformational right. well, we've, churches. We've left it. We've kind of left the Reformation. Right. But we and, got almost full circle. Right. Yeah. And you got people coming back and they're they're still trying to find peace. Well, now Christians are the new Catholics, right? And, like that's and, kind of what's happening. Ooh. I mean, I, honestly, and, yeah. when I read your beginning at least when I read the beginning of your book on vocation, that was missing from the first 15 20 years of my Christian life. Biblical vocation it was just not there. And you talk to people, they're still, they're still making products as Christians. How to know what to do with your life. God's plan for your life. And, and that we're making. And it's like reading tea leaves. I mean, it really Come is. What now. is God's will for my life? <laughs> yes. I think I'm going to just try and, and they're maybe, looking for Maybe it'll be in like, the clouds. Maybe if yeah. I buy this product that they're selling, then I'll find God's will for my life. Well, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it is. It's really sad because you actually have people who are really lost looking for some direction in their lives. And they, they're, I mean, they'll pray about it. And then it's, well, the next person came along and said, Hey, I think you might be good at this. And they think, God just told me. Right, right, right. But you're saying that the way we actually find out what God calls us to is by obeying him. That's right. And it's funny because it can sound like we're saying, well, works don't get you to heaven. So why are you talking so much about obedience? Right. But there's a a massive difference in thinking we're, if I am just obedient enough, God will love me and thinking God loves me. And so out of gratitude, right. here's my life. Let right. me obey yeah. you. Yeah. And this is this is what justification by faith is all about. Yeah. It's yeah. it's that you're already accepted. It's right. That you're, you're already loved. This that Christ stood in your place, that your sins are taken away, that he's come for you in his love and his grace. And he's taking care of it all. And now you have peace with him. And now every. All of life is right. gift. When I was a kid, we were in these churches in Mississippi and, um, well, one particular church in Mississippi. And, and, and in Texas. And in Texas. <laughs> but when I was a small child, we were in Mississippi. Yeah. And there would be people, when I was a, seven years old, I had a surgery and my parents never knew who it was, but somebody paid for that surgery. Huh. And they just called the hospital and said, it's ours. And in response to that, I've always thought that's what generosity is. That mm. kind of attitude, these people, and yeah. we saw it over and over and over again. They mm. didn't need to be named. They didn't need credit. They just wanted to be gracious. Mm. But then what that did is teach me, this is what generosity looks like. And I need to spend my life mm. acting like that. That's a great, right. and, and that's what God does is God's been so generous that then our response to that isn't, well, then I'm going to take it and keep it. It's, oh, thank you. Now let me give. Let me see where mm-hmm. I can give. What can I do? So, so it, yeah. um, let's a um, couple questions or comments, and actually, I'm trying to get at some questions here. Um, so, the world teaches that kind of our, we're salvation by works, and they define what those works are, right? right? The work, the works are, you know, women. You need to find value in the workplace, your career, your career, and so they're teaching us being some strong, being strong, um, yeah, having a fit body, you know, all right. the your black all is the, beautiful. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm just are, are, you, are you talking about the Dove commercial? Uh-huh. <laughs> No, that says your black ain't beautiful. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Don't use this soap, black people. <laughs> no, do use this soap. <laughs> you, see, you see how they did that oh, there? <laughs> I, think, I think we need to fill in our audience uh, on that one. We'll no, do it later. We'll do it later. Okay. Anyway. Okay. All right. And, and so, um, and of course, that's what was going on in the Reformation. The, the church, the Catholic church had said, hey, this is where your salvation's at. It's in the convent. It's away from the home. This is where holiness is at. Indulgences. And, and, yeah, indulgences. Stuff. And so um, now... What is, what is, so, um, what has happened to where we've kind of been seduced? I mean, we have all this history of like, um, hey, don't do that. 
we this happened in the convents or like Adam and Eve at the tree. Um, children of Israel. Children of Israel. We have all these examples of stop disobeying God and, and stop listening to culture and listening to the way things are going, and we're doing that all over again. Um, does that make sense? We're, 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 uh, our women, our churches, we're listening to the world and how they define what works and what, sa- what saves us. Um, I don't know, kind of a, not necessarily a question. I'm trying to get at a question, but it, just trying to connect. How I did guess, we the get Refor- here? Yeah, tr- trying to connect kind of what happened in the Reformation to how we're back in the same spot. Like you said earlier, Toby, we're back full circle. Um, and but don't you oh. think that's kind of, I mean, you know, when you read Exodus and He's in numbers is the worst. Like sure. he, or judges. Judges yeah. is super depressing. Yeah. Well, but then they like you see God saves them and then what do they do? Three generations oh, later. Yeah. yeah. Right. Next chapter. Right. And then they say, Oh, we we don't think you'll help us out. We don't think you'll save us. We're hungry. Right. And then they, yeah, that's yeah. and that's yeah. what we are by nature is forgetters. Right. I'd also point to the fact that we've also had a pretty significant decline. I mean, um in in men. In, in, in masculinity. So in the Reformation. Why are you looking at me when you say that, man? I, I'm saying. Hey, we already talked about, about that feminism. Hey, we're having, a, <laughs> we're having got, an event. Look, it got but, preached out, but, brother. Come on now. But you I'm have. Back. But what, I mean, it, it's, you know, what the Reformation was is you suddenly, you had a bunch of, a, a, a bunch of men and women. Yep. Um, together, though, determine um, that their lives were entirely and completely found their meaning, their peace, their joy in Christ alone and finding their identities by, by, and, and so they didn't love their own lives. They gave their lives away freely. They did. And, and I think it's important when you look at these women who escaped the convents or you look at all the reformers and their wives or, or people that were not married, whatever the case, people that became Protestants, they didn't know the reformation would succeed. So when they become Protestants, it's, Likely they could just be killed and the whole thing would die. Right, when yeah. you look back 500 years, you think, well, yeah, it succeeded. See, right. uh, and they were all fine. Look, but yeah, what yeah. they felt like was this complete insecurity. So they had so, to trust God right. mm-hmm. and they had, it was giving right. their lives away. Wow. Right. Yeah. And, I, but I, yeah. and I think, but I think the thing is, is that it, it's in the last um, hundred, 200 years, um, you've also had with the rise of feminism, you've also had the rise of effeminacy. In, in yeah, men. absolutely. And so, yeah, absolutely. and so you don't have men. Malakoy. Y- yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But, you ha- but you haven't yeah. had men, um, uh, being strong, protecting their daughters, loving their wives. That's right. And, um, in giving themselves away freely. Because they don't know their own vocation. Right. And, and so there's, there's, I think that's, that's part of what's going on too, though, in terms of like, why, how do we get back here? Yeah. Um, we, we need, um, we need men who don't love their lives to the death, who are willing to, Obey Jesus, no matter the cost. Lay their lives down. Be forgotten. Be nobodies. In obedience to Christ, and yeah. and and when and when men and women do that, um, worlds change. Yeah, so it really does have to be both. It can't yeah. be right. just. I mean, God uses yeah. both, and He uses unit, the family yeah. to to right. change the world. That's what so. That's what I love about the end of your book is that's that right. ultimately it's pushing towards that family unit right there, and and how it's working. Usually in our community. I think, um, or any reformed community that has good, solid preaching, the guys take the first blunt of all the rebukes, right? Like the, the rebukes and the ad- admonition goes right to the guys and they get hit really hard. And, and you can, and that's good. Men yeah. need to be built up that way. And, but a lot of times I think women sit back, okay, so what, what am I supposed to do? Like, okay, I'm ready. Throw me in. Tag me in. High five <laughs> me. What, what, what am I going to do? And they sit there yeah. like, oh, okay. All right. I'll just, I'll just wait. I'm good. <laughs> but you know, one of the things I love about the end of your book is that you, you say, look, guys, this is what you do. As you're finding your vocation, you said the first thing was that you loved God, right? Like you, you gave yourself to the Lord, you love God, and then you just started doing things. And some of the things that you listed you were doing were was t- sacrificing for your husband. I love that language. There, John Piper says about Sarah Edwards, who's the wife of Jonathan Edwards, she made him successful by the work that she did. She made him productive. And that's not an exact <laughs> quote, it's a paraphrase, but basically her life made his ministry better. Right. And <laughs> what greater thing could a woman give to her husband to mm. make him more successful? He's out there changing the world. And what if she provides a refuge for him, provides wise counsel to him? You can't, a husband that doesn't have a wise wife, you can see it. You can see it mm. in his work. Yeah. And, ooh. Wow. Oh, she yeah. said you see it in his work. Come wow. on, Jesus. <laughs> Help us, Lord. But that's why women should never feel like, well, 
it doesn't really matter what I do because I'm not out there on the front lines. Yeah. Oh, you're right. super important. You are so crucial to yeah. the, uh, how can he be successful if he's fighting at home? Right. Mm. I think, I think one of yeah. the, one of the things I was, I was struck by, by reading your book um, was of course, like Martin Luther was integral in the reformation and John Calvin and all these, I mean, we can name Martin Booster, all these, you know, guys that, that are names, you know, almost household names now, but like how, um, like how the reformation was so driven by women, by the wives and all this. Martin Bootser's wife, um, of course, Martin Luther's wife. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, no way. It's, oh, just a power, it's just a, a powerful, um, the Reformation was so powerful, at, almost almost in some sense, more because of the women in, in some sense, because they had this huge support with these men who were getting thrown around, thrashed, and getting called to councils and getting called to to all these, you know, deathly meetings that they could have, you know, well, and also as a way to spread the Reformation. So these reformers' wives are having, yep. and when I say they're having people for dinner, I mean, maybe it's 40 people every night, mm -hmm. and you don't have indoor plumbing. I know. I know. <laughs> or electricity. That's yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. Right. So, they, but what's happening is that's how they're spreading the Reformation. So there's students, there's visiting pastors, there's theologians, scholars, all these people are at the table. Mm. Then, you know, they don't have the internet. They don't have news right. in the same way. So they're spreading the Reformation through at their table ta fellowship. At their tables. Wow. Right. Yeah. At their tables. Yeah. And there, and you read through and all of them have been to each other's houses. She mm -hmm. hosted these people, you know, she hosted right. Calvin, she hosted Zwingli. She, yeah. and it's right. fabulous. So it's like, we need to feast. Mm. It's Ooh. always like and we fight. need to feast. Right. We need yeah. to feast. But like, I mean, this is like, yeah. how did the Reformation, I mean, you're saying Reformation by feasting. Wow. I actually, Reformation at tables. I think you could write an entire book on hospitality and how it influenced the Reformation. And I yeah. think it would it be fascinating. How it changed the world. And how it wow. feast without any cooks. Right. You know I mean? right. Yeah. right. Right. But 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 the glory the glory of yeah. that. Yeah. The yeah. Glory and of the that. joy of it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's 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 really good. Popes and feminism. Yeah. Where's this book? It's at it's at canonpress.com. Canon you can Press. find it on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Um we'll send we'll put some links out, of course, through our email and, and uh Facebook channels. Yeah. Um, just a great book. Oh, one other book I wanted to mention related to this was Radiant. Um, Radiant is basically a biography of Reformation of women in the Reformation. Okay. Um, it it actually was more than just women in the Reformation. It went farther back than that, yeah. but it was. But you can buy that book. Was, you can buy that back on Canada Press. You got you got you yeah. to get Infinity. Elisa's book. And and if you're really nerdy, go get When Fathers Ruled. Yeah, That's which a, is also oh. just fabulous oh, it's, by it's, Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. Harvard scholar, Osmond, right? Osmond. Stephen Osmond. Stephen Osmond. Yeah. That's wow. the third book in line. After yeah, yeah, get Elise's get Elise's book first. Get John Henry's mom's book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank first. you all very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you Thanks, for having Elise. me. Yeah. Yeah. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Until next week, go fight, laugh, and let's feast. This is Cross Politics.